Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would I would like to continue talking about um, probabilities. Uh, in particular, it's a continuation of the previous lecture where I was talking about cumulative uh, probability distribution. I would like to talk about probability density distribution. Um, this is part of the um, um, advanced course of mathematics. Uh, for high school students presented on unizor.com and I do suggest you to go to this website uh, to watch this lecture because it also contains very detailed comments and notes for each lecture which you can basically read like a textbook and in addition to register students um, there are some exams and some other education educational functionality kind of procedures like enrolling etc all right so probability density distribution well let me start with whatever i have finished in the previous lecture about cumulative distribution so just a reminder that the function which is called cumulative probability distribution is basically a probability of our random variable to be less than some value x now obviously as x is increasing the probability is also increasing and it, it, if x goes to infinity uh, the probability goes to one so the function f of x is monotonically well not decreasing let's put it this way not necessarily increasing but definitely not decreasing and if we go to the left to the mm, mm, negative infinity obviously this probability should go to uh, zero so, the graph of this probability is something like this. And this is asymptotically uh, going to 1. Or it might actually reach 1 at some point if, for instance, our variable uh, Xi is concentrated on certain uh, segment and there are no values, there is zero probability it will take the value less than A or greater than B, then the probability would be uh, the this cumulative probability would be something like this so it starts from zero ends with one and then basically continues with one here and continues with zero here so whatever what whatever it is this represents a cumulative probability now before going into uh, probability density i would like to make certain analogy with mechanics with mechanical motion now when i was explaining this cumulative probability i was um, comparing uh, this with the movement uh, from distance from point a to point b and this is the time and we start at a and um, the function which we are talking about it's a, it's a distance function uh, of time we start at point a which means we have covered zero uh, miles kilometers meters whatever and by the time we reach b our distance is growing well it can grow um, uniformly if we are talking about the constant speed or you can go slower in which case you will have less distance covered here and then faster here but eventually we still reach the point which is the distance between A and B or capital A capital B right So, no matter how we move, we reach from distance zero, covered by our uh, trip, to the maximum distance, which is uh, distance between these two points. Now, as we are moving, we are covering distance. And the analogy with this is, as x is increasing, increasing we are covering more and more values which random variable c might take so it's kind of an analogy but now with traveling from a to b obviously the distance covered 
if you are uh, going by car, it's uh, odometer, right? But there is also another very important characteristic, a speed. Now, speed for our trip is extremely important, and what I would like to, to show you right now, that there is an analogy with the speed um, in the probabilities, and basically the probability density function is in the probability theory uh, is equivalent to speed in mechanical movement. And here's how I would like to present it. Now, let's talk about speed first. It's kind of mu much more familiar um, territory, right? Uh, how do we determine speed? Well, let me just start from something very simple and complex at the same time. For those people who understand um, the calculus, uh, speed is basically the first derivative of this function, the distance covered by, by the time t, uh, t, by the time t. Now, for those not familiar with calculus, it will be a lengthier explanation, but here is what it is. First of all, we can determine um, the concept of average speed. Average speed is distance divided by time. So, for instance, from A to B, um, the uh, distance is, let's say, D, and the time which we spend from zero, and this is time T. So the time is T. So the D divided by T would be our average speed on entire, during entire trip. That's obvious, right? Well, that's actually a definition. There is nothing obvious about this. The average speed is the distance divided by the time we have covered this distance in our trip. Providing, obviously, we are going into one direction only. We don't do this type of movement back and forth, back and forth. So we're always driving from A to B during the time T and the distance covered D. So D divided by T is our average speed. Now, what if we would like to know a little bit more precise um, our speed at certain moments. For instance, the first half I was doing slow and then the second half of my trip I was doing faster, right? Or I can divide this particular time interval into many, many different small um, intervals and determine my average speed on each interval. So I will have average speed during my first, let's say, second is such and such, my second second would be such and such, my third second would be a little bit more, etc., etc. So I can define my average speed on any uh, however small time period. Now, as I increase the number of intervals and decrease their lengths in time, I more and more precisely calculate my um, average speed uh, on, any, uh, on any however small interval. And basically, if I will do this, for instance, this is the moment t, and the next one, let's say this length is d. So the next one would be t plus d. So if I will uh, calculate the distance I, ca I cover from t to t plus, pl plus d, which is distance of t plus d, minus distance at moment t. <coughs> That's how much I covered during this period of time. And divide it by the time from t to t plus d, which is d, right? And if I will do the limit of this as my d goes down to zero, so my interval is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Finally, this number will be my momentary speed, speed at moment t, which is actually what speed at moment t actually is, right? So that, that's basically the definition, and, um, uh, and that allows you to uh, absolutely precisely know the um, speed at any time, provided you have the function which is distance uh, covered uh, by the time t, for, for, for any time t. Now, 
this is how the speed is introduced. Now, I will do something similar in my theory of probabilities. So I know that my random variable takes certain values and let's just for um, simplicity assume that my random variable is always from lowercase a to lowercase b. So its values are concentrated. Uh, next uh, um, uh, continuation of this would be probably to put infinities on either or both sides, but that's actually absolutely not important. So let's just, for uh, argument's sake, assume that uh, C belongs to this particular interval. Now, I know that C can take all these intervals, and um, the graph, graph of this f at x, if this is A and this is B, now, the probability less than a for, for our random variable c to take the value less than a is zero, right? Because all the values are concentrated from a to b. So f at x would always be zero prior to a. Now, uh, it will always be less than b, so by the time, b b b b after the value b, the probability should always be 1, right? So it's definitely less than any number greater than b, since it belongs to this interval. Now, in between, from a to b, the probability, um, the cumulative probability function will grow some, 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 somehow like this. Whatever way it grows, doesn't really matter. Now, what does it mean? You see, here it grows a little slower, here it grows a little faster. And recall back to our trip, sometimes we are going slower and sometimes we are going faster. Now what does it mean? Well, it means that the values within this interval are more probable than, let's say, values within this interval before that. Because it looks like the function grows faster during this, which means I'm adding more probabilities to take these values on each small step rather than on these values. So that's the difference. Now, we can actually um, make certain logical uh, um, arguments with uh, analysis of the growth of this function, similar to the ones which we just did for, for speed. Let's divide this particular segment from A to B into small intervals. Now, what is probability to get from x to x plus d? So the probability of function c to be from x to x plus d. Well, we know this probability function, so it's basically function of x plus d. So the probability to take value less than x plus d minus probability to take value less than x. That would be the probability to be in between x and x plus d, right? Now, obviously, if d is greater, this thing will also be greater, right? Because this is growing function. However, um, if I will compare, let's say, this difference for different intervals, some intervals will have this difference smaller, like this, and some interval, like this for instance, from this to this, it would be a bigger difference. So, expression divided by the lengths of this interval would be a characteristic of how fast the function grows during this interval from x plus x plus d. And if I will decrease my d to zero at point x is fixed and d would be smaller and smaller and smaller, 
I will get basically something which is equivalent to um, to, to, to speed in, in the movement and in uh, uh, in the case of theory of probabilities this would be my uh, density of probability at point X exactly this is the definition of the density of the probability or probability density and again if you know the calculus this limit is basically the first derivative of the cumulative function by argument X but in any case even if you don't know the the calculus and we will address calculus in, in some future lectures but since we already know what limits are that would that was actually part of the old stuff which we have covered long time ago so this is something which is a definition of the probability density at point X and now you can definitely say that at certain moments this is faster like in this moment it's faster than in this moment for instance if this is my function right okay now let's just make a very small example let's consider the probability is so-called uniform distribution on segment from A to B now uniform means that basically the probability to be within certain interval this interval is exactly the same as probability to get into this interval as long as the intervals are of the same lengths between A and B the probability is exactly the same now what does it mean well it that basically means that f at x is linear function and the graph would be if this is a and this is b this is one so the function would be equal to my cumulative probability function would be zero until a then it will grow linearly to 1 and then again 0 that's my uniform uh, cumulative probability now what will be um, the probability density in this case well obviously if I will do this calculation x x plus d now this is f at x and this is f at x plus d now what is the difference between my increment of the probability divided by uh, increment of, of the value f at x plus d minus f at x divided by d well obviously it's just proportional to d this increment of probabilities which means if I divide it by d it would be just a constant now for those who remember trigonometry it's basically a tangent of this angle right you divide this catechus by this catechus and this is the tangent of this angle and it's a constant since this is a straight line so how my graph of the probability density would look like well very simple it's a constant and what is this constant what's the value well we can take for instance this and divide by this this is 1 and this is b minus a so my f at x is equal to 0 if x is less than a 1 over b minus a if a x b and 1 uh, sorry and 0 again 0 again if x is greater than b so the probability would look like this if this is a and this is b it would be this is 1 over b minus a it would be a constant here 0 here and 0 here this is my graph of my probability density for uniformly distributed on the segment AB 
random variable. Now, by the way, I, um, I said that if A and B are not really fixed numbers but, but infinities, so for instance we have normal variables, and normal variables can have um, the values, um, uh, any values, they're not restricted by anything. Um, and um, you have uh, definitely uh, seen this bell curve. Now, what is this bell curve? Well, bell curve is a probability density for a normally distributed random variable. It shows that some maximum uh, probability will be concentrated around the middle value and as we go further and further from the middle value the probability would decrease um, so basically when, whenever you see something like this you just have to understand that this is um, the probability density graph it's another story that we don't really have exact um, a bell curve like this. We have certain statistical, for instance, um, data and we put it on some kind of a graph and it looks like the bell curve, but it's only because if you remember some of uh, random variables, um, the more number, the, the more, the more random variables you're adding together, the more their sum resembles the normal distribution and that's why we have this bell curve. All right, so that's all I wanted to cover. Yes, one more little thing. You see, this cumulative probability is actually a universal function in, uh, in that respect that it fits for a uh, description of the probabilities of uh, discrete random variables as well as um, continuous. So let me just give you an example again. Um, For continuously distributed random variable, you just saw the, the graph might look something like this, right? For discretely distributed random variables, the, the graph would look something like this. Something like this. Because these are the values where probability mass is concentrated for discrete values in this case my a random variable which takes only four different values so the probability of less than this value would be zero the probability to get the value between this and this is actually the probability to get only this value right because it doesn't take all these in between so that's why the probability jumps now so this is kind of a universal function. How about the probability density function? Well, with this, that's easier because it's continuous thing and it's in most cases, in smooth cases, it always has the probability density because that limit which I was talking about, limit of f at x plus g minus f at x divided by divided by d. Now this uh, exists in, in smooth cases. In this case it does not exist quite frankly because these are jumps and whenever you're jumping the probability um, density function it looks like the whole probability density finite probability is concentrated in one point which is not really the way how smooth function actually act. So in case like this, probability density function, generally speaking, you can say it does not really exist because, um, it, well, it's zero in between, but at, this, at these points, when it jumps, it doesn't really exist, right? Because the length d would be, you know, d probably would be actually zero in this case. <coughs> so, the probability density function does not exist for um, discrete uh, random variables. 
I mean, you can actually talk about the probability density function using some, um, some mathematical tools, it's called delta function, which we don't really want to cover, uh, at least not right now. Um, so, in a normal sense, um, uh, probability does not, uh, probability density function does not exist for, um, it's better to use the mass distribution function which is not really the same thing as probability density. The mass distribution function just gives you how much probability is concentrated in all these, uh, in all these functions, in all these points where the value can, can be taken. All right, fine. That's probably it. That's all I wanted to talk about um, probability density. Um, what I would suggest you to do is go to the unisor.com and read notes to this lecture. Uh, they are quite detailed and uh, I think it will just bring your understanding to a higher level. Um, it's like a good textbook, I would say. So it's always good to read after you have listened to something like this. Alright, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>